Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Panama Steve right here at Pacific Vibe Studios. I got Big John in the building. It's a pleasure having you here. Appreciate you having me, brother. Man, this is this guy's got one hell of a story, and uh, he's a life coach and all kinds of things. I would love for you to just introduce yourself and, you know, go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. All right. My name is John Burris. I um, was raised here in East San Jose. Worked out here for many years. Went to... Um, Overfield High School and worked many years for the county. Um, then moved moved away for a little while and lost balance and, like I said, worked in the county for a long time in the as a counselor. So during these times, early times in my 40s, it was pretty challenging times, times that could have made made or break, break me, you know. Um, during the years of, how can I say, years 2000? No, 1994, there was a war. There was a war on the community. And that war consisted of our, a lot of us, our people got hooked on crack. Um, cocaine was really abundant in the neighborhood. So a lot of good people got caught into it, including myself. So for years, got caught into that, was doing that for many years. And the turning point for me came about 2004. I'd lost my family. Um, was away from my family, living in Vallejo, doing smoking crack cocaine every day, and wanted to kill myself. You know, it got to the point where I took some pills, alcohol, and just ready to call it a day. I remember walking on the pier and um, just saying, this is it. You know, I'm a failure. I've lost everything and just ready to lay it down. Next thing I knew, somebody was waking me up. That uh, Somebody was sticking some tubes. It came to be the paramedic. Somebody saw me laying down on the bench in the Meridian and uh, resuscitated me. So come to find out that I had a major heart attack. So I'm thinking, man, why, why am I still alive? Why am I still alive? Wow, that's you know? crazy. So... Um, it was pretty tragic right there, you know, the fact that I almost didn't live. And I didn't understand why I was still alive because I was so overwhelmed with just shame and guilt how I let my family down. But two weeks later, I get a call from my, my oldest son, and he says, Mom's just been killed. My wife at the time had just been killed. She had been killed by, um, struck by a car. So here I am. Um with a bad habit, barely overcome killing myself, and now I have four kids to raise, four grieving kids to raise. At that time, I thought it was the worst thing ever to happen in my life, you know, because I was in a really bad shape. But to tell you the truth, in hindsight, it was probably the best thing that happened to me because if it wasn't for my kids, I probably wouldn't be here today. And now understanding that there was a reason why I was saved. There was a reason why <clears throat> the Lord didn't take my life that day because I was meant to be here and raise my kids up, you know. So that was, that was a hard time. So raising the kids up during that time, still had issues, still drinking a lot of alcohol, um, wasn't taking care of myself. Um, so right around, let's see, can I say 19, no, not 19, about 2000, that happened in 2005. So around 2009, had some no another devastating news. Because I wasn't taking care of myself, came down with, went to the doctor, he says, you got prostate cancer, you got diabetes and hypertension. Wow. I'm like, wow. Uh, what am I going to do now? So I had to make a decision right then and there to start taking care of myself. And the only way I knew that I could take care of myself was to start exercising. I start exercising. I worked out every day because I didn't really have a place to live, anything like that. And what I understood is the more I exercised and felt better about myself, the better things got. All my health issues disappeared. I'd use that, I have addictive personality and the same drive that I had in procuring drugs and stuff like that, I utilized it in the gym. And since that time, uh, my life has changed tremendously. 
I became a better father. I became a better person. I met the woman of my dreams. Um, I became more of a positive influence around people around me. Um, it's just been amazing what that, how things have always been working out for me. Even in midst of tragedies, things are always working out. So anybody that's out there that's going through times, that's going through struggle, I want you to know that they're there for a reason. Things are not happening to you, but they're happening for you. But you got to find a way to get past that bad feeling. You got to find a way to have a reason to live, to have a reason to persevere. I wouldn't be the person I am today if all those things would not have happened. And I'm so grateful that God saved my life wow, that's so crazy. that I can persevere. That's a very interesting story. Yeah. It's, all, it's more than a 360. It's like a 720. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you weren't going on a very good path in the first place and then get woken up in the hospital. And then your wife or your your ex is passing. Like, yeah. Right. To really wake you up to see what's going on. Next thing you know, you're on a completely positive, healthy. I mean, look at you. I met him in the gym, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he told me a little bit. Of, I, I didn't know all this that you're telling me right now. Right. But that's a... You know, it's interesting how you say, you know, you know, how you work out. Like, it's almost it's habitual. Like, right. You, right. And you're just, uh, you just channeled all your energy into positivity and health, man. I mean, big respect from over here. That's crazy. I appreciate that. I right. Appreciate and, and then you're, you know, passing the word on. And, you know, if, if you can do it, anybody can. Right. 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 Now, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling what you're saying, man. And all these things happened when I was in my 40s. Now, right now, I'm 61, so all these things happened when I was in my 40s. Wow. And the, the energy that I had, the, the, the drive that I had to get high every day, I just flipped the switch. I use all that. Yeah, go in there and get, get your yolks on. Yeah, I can get that on. Right. You know? So I don't need any substances. I mean, recently, it's been about two years now, alcohol was taking its effect on me because I drank over 35 years, so mm, had to um, give that up, too. Like 100%? Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I read one book. It's one book that changed my life. It was by this guy named Alan Carr. It says, the easy way to become a non-drinker. And um, this lady was on the Joe Rogan show. Mm -hmm. She said, after I read that book, I never drank again. I'm like, hey, that's the book for me. I read that book. I never had a desire to drink again. Really? And the reason being because... So many times when we're drinking or dealing with a decision as far as drugs or drinking, we associate so much pain with giving that activity up. How am I going to socialize? How am I going to go to the club? You know, how am I going to how am I going to be comfortable around people? Everybody's doing it. But in that book, what it showed me was it was more pain in me drinking than it was pleasure. And I start flipping the switch. I'm like, you know what? It is more pleasure. I can remember things more. I can get up without a hangover. And I'm of the age right now, I don't have to fall with peer pressure. Right. You know, I can be comfortable being in my own skin, you know. And I can be an example. When I got grandkids now, I can be an example for them. You know, so once you flip whatever activity that you're doing, once you start seeing that there's pleasure in not doing something and pain and, and, and keep doing something, once you get that flip in your mind, you're all in my avoid because that's the way the brain works. The brain, the the mind avoids pain and seeks pleasure. So if you have somebody who's drinking all the time, there's more pain in them to not drink than there is pleasure. Even though there is pain as far as them damaging their health and stuff like that, there's still more pain in them giving up the alcohol or any kind of vice. That's an interesting take. I I personally don't drink very often, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I would like to say just to not be socially awkward. So, you know, I drink socially maybe three, four times a year or something. I go to Panama and I drink a little bit. You yeah, know? yeah. But I'm on vacation, right? Yeah, so yeah. if we're not celebrating something or, or if is isn't something in particular that, you know, that we're celebrating or, you know, right. we, you know, uh, old friends uniting or something like that, or for the most part, you know, not to be a stick in the mud because pretty much everybody drinks. Right, right. right. But for the most part, I don't like to drink because I know myself kind of like, you know, it like fogs my judgment, you know, and I like to see it. 
it's almost like a ship yeah. sinking. Yeah. And I see the hole and I could do something about it, but I'm yeah. just like, fuck it, you know, and that's not cool, you know. So I pretty much stay away from alcohol. That's just my, you know, I like to smoke some herb and stuff, but right, you know what right, I mean? Right, I'm, not right. no, I'm not no angel. Right, right, I'm not right. Here right. to, you know. But for the most part, alcohol, like, um, I can see why people do what they do when they drink. You know what I mean? And I ain't trying to knock nobody's thing. You know, no, you, no, no, you know no, to no. each his own, right? No, no. You got to know who you are. For right. me, I'm all or nothing. When you see right. me, You're going gym, all I'm the way there in. all the time. Right. So I'm not drinking beer. I'm not drinking wine. Right. I'm drinking the hard shit. And I'm drinking five days a week. Not getting drunk, but I'm drinking all the time. So I classify myself more as a habitual drinker than an alcoholic. So, how, so okay, the last, you said the last two years, you stopped drinking. Mm-hmm. How do you see yourself health wise as, oh. as those last two years? Oh man, I'm not bloated. I look at other pictures, always had a pot belly on me. You know, um, the problems I was having was I used to have, like I said, 35 years of drinking. So I, my liver would start giving me problems. The dull pain in my right side. Mm. Um, couldn't swallow food because. Uh, mucus, the mucus was going on, inflammation in the mucus. So my esophagus was getting swollen. So once I stopped doing that, everything went away. Interesting. I don't have any bloatness. I don't have right. any bloatness. Um, yeah, no more pain. I think the first year was probably the hardest. And it was kind of not to knock any other programs as far as AA and stuff. They help a lot of people. But for me, it didn't resonate. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it just didn't resonate. Um, one of the things was, you know, um, saying I'm an alcoholic, you know. For me, I had a habit of drinking, you know. Whatever you say you are, that's what you're always going to be. Right. I like to refer to myself as a non-drinker now. That fits me more than saying I'm an alcoholic. Right. You know, that resonates more with me. And whatever you say you are, that's what you're going to have a problem with. You know, that's what you're going to become. So saying it out loud over and over, over and over, and over it, it didn't work for me. It works for other right. people, but it didn't resonate right. with me. So I used to think, man, if I can't do AA, I'm just going to, I don't know what's going to happen, you know. But the Lord brought to me attention another way, you know, so there's always other ways. The other thing that I learned that's very important in all of this, I start learning how our moods, I'm a firm believer in the law of attraction firm believer in that. That basically states whatever whatever your mood is, that's what you're going to attract. You know? If you feel in a good mood, you're going to attract good people. You're going to attract good circumstances. If you're in a bad or negative mood, you're going to attract negative people. Just like a magnet. But we are the creator of our reality with our mood. So every day I get up, I do affirmations, I do a gratitude list, I make sure that my mood is elevated. Beautiful. And in the midst of everything that's going on, I live in a beautiful world. You see me out, I connect with people at the gym. Right. It's magical. He's like a politician in there. Yeah, you stop everybody me, and everybody, they everybody call stops me the mayor. him. Right. right. Because all I do is I just have so much love and appreciation that's for cool, life man. and my people that just it's just magical. I don't watch news. I don't watch negative things. Why? That's no value to my life. I can't control what's going on in politics. No matter who's president or not, I'm going to have a good life. Yeah, that's cool. You know? That's the way to look at it. Yeah, it's just... You got to make the wonderful. best of it. So once you understand that you are the creator of your life with your mood, and that's why exercise is so important for me. Because when I exercise, my vibration is high. And then I attract certain things on certain levels. And if, if I could tell anybody, it's so important to understand how these laws are. You know, things are not happening by coincidence. There's people I used to have in my life that we used to do certain things mm-hmm. because we were right there. We were on the same frequency. But now that I don't drink anymore. You ain't on the same frequency. We ain't on the same frequency. Right. Right? And it's cool. You know? So if you're around negative people, check yourself. Because you're on the same frequency. And the other thing is, things are always working out for you. From my story, even in the midst of the most tragic things, things were working out for me. So when things happen to me, 
I don't say good or bad. It just is. What am I going to do? And the other thing that I say is like, one of the mantras I say, I'm 100%, 100% responsible for whatever happens in my life. Accountability. And it's not, I'm at fault or anything like that. Mm. But when you break that word down, responsibility, I have the ability to respond to anything that comes. Anything that happens, I have that ability to respond to anything. I don't get into the blame factor. Oh, such and such did me wrong, stole money. All right? Such and such happened. Okay, cool. You allowed that. I allowed that. Mm -hmm. If there's a problem and I'm there, I'm a part of the problem. So what am I going to do about it? Blame somebody else for it, be a victim, or respond in the proper way and be a victim? One of two ways. So, yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, yeah, you have to look at everything from a positive ass, uh, perspective or else, you know, if you look at it negative, then all the negativity is just going to pull right to you like a magnet. Mm-hmm. So, no, no, I'm with you 1,000% on that one. And every time that you create something that you don't want, on the other end of that, you created something that you do want. But so many people attract things in their lives and say, man, I don't want it. And they give all their attention to what they don't want. Guess what they attract? Shit they don't want. Right. What you don't want is the bouncing off place for what you do want. If I don't have enough money, I'm not going to keep focused on not having enough money. Mm, I just created some money. So let me give thanks for money that's going to come my way. Let me give thanks for the opportunities that's going to come my way. Wherever you get your intention to, that's where it's going to flow. Wherever the energy goes, that's where it's going to flow. So it's basic rules, man. But if you understand the basic laws of the universe, man, life is happening. So what would you suggest to people that would want to, like, stop and change their life? Like, what would be the initial steps to go ahead and accomplish in just a three, just a, you know, you did the 720, so... You know what I mean? Just to go ahead and get started. Like, what would you suggest? You don't have to have a, a tragedy or something happen no, to no, you, no, no, you know, no, no, to, no, no, to no. do what you're doing. Right, 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 right. The major thing when I'm talking to people right now is I have a groups and stuff. Start being grateful for what you have. I have groups right now, and every day we um, have a group thread, and we put what we're grateful for. Every day. And that because we have a group thread, everybody checks in. And when you start doing that, you stop focusing on what you don't have. You realize the blessings that you do have. You know, you start, again, raising that frequency up. It's interesting. My friend um, I hadn't seen in 30 years. I, I just went to Hawaii recently. And uh, he had me do, you know, we're good friends. And we're, you know, looking out for each other. He said, write down your goals and write down another, on another piece of paper where you got what you're grateful for. He said, read that out every morning, what you're talking about, the affirmations and stuff. Right. So was, I just recently, I've heard about, and I know what it is, right? But I just recently did this just for obviously for my own benefit. And, but it is a trip, um, you know, to really go over it and really right. do it, like really right. live it. So right. I've, I've been doing it like for the last week. Right, right. And it's interesting that you're bringing it up right now, and it's a real thing. You oh, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. You go ahead and put it out in the atmosphere. Oh, and, yeah. And you're pushing behind it, and you every day you're waking up with it. So, you know, writing down a list of what you're grateful oh, yeah. for oh, yeah. I, um, is, uh, is gold. Um, eight months ago, I was, had my daughter on a gratitude list. I said, start putting down things that you want to happen that hasn't even happened, mm -hmm. yet, you know, because it's already there. God already knows what you want. So instead of asking, give thanks for it. So she put down three things on her list. She was in L.A. at the time with a terrible job. She was far away from me and she wasn't in a good relationship. I said, put down. I'm thankful for having a better job. I'm thankful for living close to my parents. I'm thankful for being in a relationship that's going to lead to marriage. Within eight months, better job, she's five minutes away from me, and she's getting married in May. Look at that. She manifested that. When you understand is whatever you want is already there, and the way to clear the path is to give gratitude, 
It's the most important thing. So, again, some of the, that gratitude is good. Find something that you love to do that's going to make you feel good. Raise that up. Whether you like to do art, whether you like to do music, working out, find something that's going to make you feel good. Right. Because in feeling good, you clear the path for great things to come. Everything is responding to your mood. Don't give your attention to the negative things in life. Give your attention to the positive things. Just let it roll off your back, right? Just roll it off. There's a reason, and there's a season. And everything is temporary. The bad is just a bouncing off spot for something good to happen, no matter what. And the other thing that's so important is when you do some habits create or break you. Good habits create you. Bad habits break you. <laughs> Absolutely. But it only takes 30 days to create a habit. Start making my bed up. I, I can't leave my house without making my bed up. Right. Meditating. I can't do anything without meditation. Coming to the gym. A habit is something you don't even think about. When I used to drink, I didn't think about drinking. I just did it out of habit. So that's how you program the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is something mm -hmm. that you just program when you do it over and over again. And then it takes over from there. Yeah, my boy out in Hawaii was just talking to me about the subconscious and conscious mind. 80-20. Yep. The conscious mind is so small. It's all about the subconscious mind. You know, some of the little tricks that I do even at nighttime, because while the conscious mind is sleeping, I listen to affirmation tapes throughout the night. Because the subconscious mind is always awake. So the conscious mind is like the guard. So when that guard falls asleep, whatever you listen to, that's why you, you can't watch negative stuff or listen, fall asleep to news or anything like that. Because you're feeding negative stuff into the subconscious mind. But you do aff affirmations, you got it on YouTube or whatever, start reprogramming your subconscious mind. You know, it's, it's funny you say that too. Not only on... TV, but you know, even on social media, I seen this meme not so long ago. It said that if you go on social media and you get all frustrated and mad and stuff, you're following the wrong people. You know, you're definitely not supposed to. When you go to entertain yourself, get get flustered or frustrated or mad or take on somebody else's negativity, right? Right, right. So, right. like what you're talking about, like maybe not even just the news. Like you can just feed yourself some negative bullshit, like. Just trying to go and scroll in through Facebook or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying, you know, go and uh, erase people. But <laughs> for the most part, there's good reason behind the negativity and the negative vibes that you can take on from somebody else. And, you know, drugs and alcohol always play a role in some kind of wicked stuff popping off or always around in my personal. Right. Life And it's funny because I had some friends that had to live on the streets and stuff. And um, one of them's doing real good, my boy Terry, man. And, uh, yeah, he said to me, he goes, Steve, everybody that's living on the streets, everybody that has problems, everybody that's, like, really struggling out there has some kind of alcohol or drug addiction. Like, don't get it twisted. Everybody's. And he was telling me because, you know, he's sober now. Right. For how many years, you know, right. you know, you know how a lot of these cats are, you know, these many days and all sure. that. Right. And I respect it 1000% because, you know, this guy turned his life around like what we we're talking about with you. Right. And, you know, um, yeah, it's I mean, it's not that it was like super shocking, but it was like no shit. You know, it's, it's not all, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, it's mental health. And yeah, there's some people that are sure. messed up. Right. Sure. But nine times out of ten. According to my boy that been out there in the streets is because of some kind of alcohol and drug use. Once right. you let that go, there's government, you know, assistance that can put you in some kind of housing. Right. But you have to pass the test. Right. You have to behave yourself. Right. 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 So, yeah. you know, that drugs and alcohol is something serious. It is. And like you were talking about the social media, if you want to really understand how the law of attraction works, check out social media. Whatever you pay attention to, you become on an algorithm. You pay attention to certain right. things, you attract. 
That's exactly how the law of attraction works. So the AI is picking up, oh, this guy loves that negativity. <laughs> Let's just feed him more, right? It's a perfect example. Whatever you pay attention to, that's what you're going to attract more of. But you have the choice. You have the choice. Right. At all times. Because we choose to think. And when you think good things, you feel good things, then you create a yeah. beautiful world. Good things oh, happen to good people. Exactly. Right. It's not lucky. That good juju. <laughs> yeah. I'm with it. Spread that positivity. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Demonstrate through the clarity of your example. Man, that's a beautiful thing, man. Man, you got deep real quick over here. <laughs> no, that's that's crazy. And I give you big props on your accomplishments and your the guy's in great shape, man. We ran into each other, I don't know, two, three years ago now, right? Right, right. right. Might have been pre COVID. Yeah, right. Probably, yeah, right. So like four we're, years, yeah, five yeah, years ago. Yeah, he's, and uh, yeah, he's always in great shape and doing all kinds of stuff and politicking in the gym. Uh, you know, I call it feeding the beast. Feeding the beast. The beast used to be fed with other shit. Now I feed the beast with good shit. Oh man, I mean that's <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> you know, because I have a lot of friends that have fallen to drugs and right. maybe not so much alcohol, but definitely drugs. Right. And uh, one of my boys. He, uh, I was doing all right. I was, I was living in Panama, sold a little piece of property. This was back in 2007. This guy was like a badass contractor, mechanic. He was just like a jack of all trades, MacGyver type. Right. And he just nosedived on, he was doing all kinds of drugs. But then I guess that Oxycontin stuff or whatever right. got a hold of him. And he was belly up. He calls me up. He says, uh, hey man, I need your help. And and I was like, right, you'll be all right. And he's like, no, going through it. And so many words. And to make a long story short, basically, he ended up uh, coming out to Panama with all of his construction tools. And I didn't know he was like fully, uh, what do you call it? Like a junkie. Mm. Like this guy was sucked up, like, you know, all jacked up, bags under everything. I, don't, I didn't realize what, who I was talking to over the phone. Right. So, yeah, he was all sucked up and jacked up on, you know what I mean? And then I ended up, uh, he was staying with me at a hotel while we were going to build a house that I had on this property in Panama. And he ended up, uh, like, snapping back in maybe about, like, a month, you know? But I lived with a, a junkie that was having the uh, withdrawals and all that, and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would experience anything like that, mm -hmm. you know? You know, I dabbled in some drugs when I was a kid, and thank right. God I never did any of that again just right. realizing all the wickedness that's even around it but um yeah you know I'm I'm 43 years old so you know I've seen people been consuming drugs for 20 plus years and you know the toll that it's taken mm -hmm. and the drama that's around it sure even just selling shit like sure. you know what I mean it's always something it's always something crazy you know and then obviously but this guy in particular he ended up snapping back after about a month, he ended up falling back into it. Mm. But, yeah, I, I could see, like, you know, where you've, you know, the, 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 the crossroads that you've met and you stuck to it. Like, you know what I mean? My buddy, he almost, like, I almost turned him around. Because if you hang with me, we're, all we're doing all sure. day long, sure. right? We go eat some, eat some breakfast, go ahead, work construction, Right, building a house, you're gonna eat or go to sleep. You're tired, and we did this for about a month, you know. And this guy got because he was he was a big guy before, you know, like in shape. So, just naturally, you know, us eating good out there in the islands, and right. and uh, and you know, it's, it's warm out there. So he, you know, he's Italian dude. So he got his nice tan on him. I was it was almost like I had a rescue dog or something like that. Right? right, right. And he ended up like snapping back, and it was uh, it was so sad to see him come back over here and just fall into the old shit. And now, you know, one of the last places he was living was on the railroad tracks mm. in Santa Clara. Mm. You know what I mean? It's you know, it it breaks my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I almost had him back. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? And he called me for help. But there comes a point where you got to let, you know, I had, you know, let it go. I can't be responsible. He did some crazy things. 
Yeah, the most amazing, uh, the most effective thing, if you're an addict out there, you have an alcoholism problem, you got to substitute that with something else. Addicts make great people to work out in the gym. The thing that made me a great addict makes me a great gym addict. I'm driven. I know I no, get, I, I know I, at night now I just get high in the gym. Instead of chasing that rock, I chase that, chase that muscle. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a great way. I mean, you could go to meetings and all that, but unless you have something replaced, that feeling good that you just get out of the bottle, off that cocaine, you're going to go right back to it. Right. It's just a matter of time, right? Mm-hmm. And being around it, I saw a study that was done. Um, some Mexican doctor did a study and like had somebody in a CAT scan watching their brain activity go crazy when they were just putting images of coke in front of people, the ex-coke addicts and current and people that hadn't touched it in years, in 20 years. And just to watch somebody chopping up lines, like activated their brain and there was just off the charts. And this is somebody that's been, you know, 20 years sober. So just to be around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. In general, you know what I mean? If you're a recovering addict, that's not healthy. No, like, no. You need to just stay all the way away from that. Like, <laughs> how they say with that, you know, touch it with a 10 foot pole. And um, yeah, no, I believe it. You gotta stay, you gotta get away from that whole environment. One, like, all the way out. Yeah, and when, like I said, when I was using, all I was surrounded by was addicts. Now that I'm clean, I got so many people in recovery. Just hang out. But they were invisible to me before because I wasn't looking for them. Right. They was making me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're looking for somebody to party with, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. But some good, cool souls out there. We got some nice stories. Good people. You know, your addiction, whatever you're going through right now, it's, it's, it can be a gift. It can wake you up. You can turn right. into something that... One door closes, another one opens, right? One door. And you have a story to go share with somebody else. People are not going to listen to somebody about getting off drugs if you haven't been through it yourself. So, thank God, man, I was saved to be able to tell this story and share with other people. And I have no judgments against people who are doing it. But I have compassion and I have hope. Because if I can get out of that, anybody. I'm, not, I'm nothing special. Right. I'm nothing special. It's within everyone that can do it to find a better way. I'm with you, brother. And uh, like I said, once again, I give you big props because not only have you stepped away from it, but you stepped up your game health wise and mentally, you know, mental health, you know, you're being positive. Right. And so that's that's the main goal in, in general, just to pre- spread that positivity all around. Sure. And, you know, good things happen to good people. Yeah, all the time. Right. Yeah, I like your story here, man. Appreciate that. Thank man. you for letting me share it. Right. It was a pleasure having you here. And uh, I hope to have you in some other time okay. soon. Cool, cool, cool. I appreciate that. Please let everybody know where they can find you. I know you're on Facebook. Yeah, um, I'm on Instagram. Put out something on the called the Uplifting Spirit. So check me out every once in a while. I'll put some some little words of wisdom out on that. But check me out, Uplifting Spirit, on Instagram. And on Facebook, too, aren't you? Um, yeah, Facebook, too. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Uplifting Spirit? Yeah, Uplifting Spirit. Oh, man, that's awesome. Okay. All right, this is Panama Steve right here at Pacific 5 Studios. And I wish everybody a wonderful one. Have a good one. All right. <laughs>